In Japan, nearly 1,000 years ago, Mount Fuji erupted. The sound was deafening and the explosion lit up the dark night. Fire and lava rained from the skies. Sulphur filled the air and a deadly cloud of gas and debris destroyed all in its wake. Days later, when the dust had settled, lava had completely covered the northwestern flank of Mount Fuji. Over time, the lava would cool and the 30 square kilometres affected would become a national treasure, a dense forest thriving on this mineral rich soil. But the story of Akigahara did not stop when the forest was fully grown. It had just begun. Is this a place of natural beauty, a hidden gem of tranquility, or something darker? Here, in the Dark Lounge, we discuss what might have happened. Given its proximity to Mount Fuji, Akigahara is considered by most Japanese religions to be a spiritual haven, a place of contemplation. Once in the forest, almost no sound can be heard amongst the densely populated trees. It is so quiet, you can hear your blood pumping through your veins. It can be described as a gulf of emptiness. The overpowering feeling of being alone can overwhelm many people and can lead to devastating outcomes. Japan has a history of suicide with approximately 30,000 people taking their lives annually, almost one every 15 minutes. In Japan, there is substantial cultural tolerance for suicide which has been elevated to the level of an aesthetical experience through cultural and social experiences common to many Japanese. Indeed, throughout Japanese history, suicide could be justified as an honourable death for a samurai, committing seppuku after defeat in battle, or during the Second World War, kamikaze pilots giving their lives for the honour of causing mass destruction to the Allied forces. However, with no wars or battles being fought, the reasons behind such tragedy differ in the modern world we live in. The forest is extremely dense with a variety of conifers and broadleaf trees providing a home to an abundance of life, with moles, bats, deer and mink thriving. Deeper in the forest, insect and flora of all varieties flourish on the volcanic rock that forms the forest floor. The cool lava, dense in iron content, has been known to affect a compass when laid on it sending the needle spinning due to the rock's natural magnetism. However, the forest has still inherited a terrible title as one of the most popular sites for suicide in Japan. Sadly, over the past 20 years, nearly 1,000 people have died with most hanging themselves from the tree limbs. In recent years, the local authorities have stopped publishing the number of people found dead within the forest in an attempt to limit the association of suicide with the sea of trees. But what could make so many people think of committing suicide in such a natural wonder? The story begins in feudal times when food was scarce and poverty was rife. Sancho had married a young, demanding wife, and as time passed, his situation grew more desperate. Sancho's elderly mother was taking up more of his energy and his limited resources. His new wife wouldn't miss a chance to pick at him, and he tired every day of the situation he found himself in.
It was a cold morning when Sancho carried his mother up into the sea of trees. The decision weighed more than she did on his shoulders, but his wife had insisted it was the right decision. The forest was dense and navigating was difficult. Sancho knew he would still need to find his way back, even if it would be alone. So as he walked, he would place twigs on the floor to map his path. Once far into the forest, Sancho laid his mother down and returned the way he had come, collecting sticks as he walked. Once home, Sancho's life quickly returned to normal, and with more time to work and more food on the table, the couple found times were easier. However, Sancho's sleep would be disturbed. Memories of the dark forest would pull him further and further into the trees. The forest would become so dense, the sky would be lost to darkness. And then, all there was left was the deadly and broken silence. Then, the distant sound of twigs breaking would begin, slowly at first, but getting closer and closer, surrounding him. Sancho would wake with a silent scream across his face and find himself outside, staring into the forest before him. His wife would bring him back inside and calm him, but as the months went on, the nightmares came to Sancho more often. Then, one night, Sancho's wife woke up to find him gone. As she rushed outside to bring him in from his usual position, she found he was not there. He was gone and never to be seen again. It is believed that Yure, of those abandoned by Ubaste, will seek vengeance on those who leave them. These mournful spirits torment the living and feed off the sad and lost. Indeed, many who stray from the well-worn paths report finding unsettling reminders of past tragedies. Scattered personal belongings such as moss-covered wallets, shoes, photographs, briefcases and ripped clothing. Could these vengeful spirits be affecting the people of Japan? Could they be coercing them, impelling them in their dreams towards the sea of trees for crimes of their ancestors? Or is Ubasti a myth? created and combined with stories of Yurei to make sure the elderly of Japan are looked after with the respect they are due. The history of the forest may be steeped in sad tales of souls lost to suicide for a variety of reasons, but to this day there are still reports of hearing blood-curdling unnatural screams while inside the forest. A writer for the Japan Times told of an incident where he was walking alone in the forest when he heard a spine-chilling scream. When he went searching for the source of the noise, he came across the dead body of a man at the base of a tree. A quick examination revealed that the corpse had been dead for some time and could not have been the source of the scream. Was it Yurei 